and this negative thinking will be that computer simulation of social behavior is not the most popular domain in mainstream archaeology. And the example is the number of papers that are going to be rejected. A great number of papers dealing with uh, computer simulation of uh, human behavior in the past are rejected from mainstream archaeology journals. We are publishing in very restricted and thematic, uh, uh, limited or domain archaeological journals. And the sole reason for this reject is this, from the reviewer's point of view, our presentation is just an empty formal logic discussion without any tangible archaeological risks. But this uh, answer of reviewers come from some misunderstandings about the role of explanation in the past. And I think that Caesar's uh, criticism against ISA is much in this idea. What does it mean simulation? And what's the role of time? And specifically, the title of our paper, that's the relationship between virtual reality and uh, social simulations. And just in the middle, this is the concept of uh, sociophysics as the way to try to find a third point or third way between these two, these discussions. So, it seems as if many reviewers or archaeologists see computational express explanatory models as mere beliefs. There is no upper merit in the belief itself, in the model itself, they seem to are. And the only what matters is whether the model correctly predicts observed archaeological data. That means the simulation cannot go beyond the data. If our archaeological data are so restricted, and usually they have very bad quality or very few potential uh, explanatory potentials, then we cannot explain the past because our data doesn't allow that. And simulation has no value at all because just mere belief. This prejudice seems to come from Baudrillard criticism in his 1981 book, Simulacra and, Simulacra and Simulation, Baudrillard argued that simulation is not something that follows the real, but something that uh, eliminates the actual real and does not stem from any other source of origin. It's just belief. It exists in the mind of the simulator. You see this cartoon. That's when you are creating a simulation, you are looking at the simulation and you are losing the real world. Then, if a computational model eliminates the real, it has no link to the external world and there's no way to say what is true or what is wrong. It's just a belief among many others. This problem is so serious that many of us have been looking for methods to validate our models and to obtain empirically linkable rights from our models. However, the solution is not so easy. Too many different computer-generated statements can feed the same data. And it's rather easy to write a computer program to generate the statements we desire. Of course, this is not only a problem of computational models, of computing archaeology, because you can also write historical fakes. And our libraries are plenty of wrong explanations of the past. Let us think in more detail about the computer simulation as an explanation of the past and not as a mere visualization of it. Explaining the past means to show how human behavior fit a causal structure. Without cause, you have no explanation. That means that a wonderful virtual reality model, a wonderful visualization of the past is no explanation of the past. It's just another way of presenting the data. To explain a social event, means to describe the various causal chains linking all the elements involved in constituting a social fact. In such causal explanations, time is absolutely fundamental. I understand so the, the statements made by ISA. Without time, you don't have any explanatory explanation of the past. But time should not be a parameter like the calculation of Newtonian dynamics or in classical equations. It should be defined in terms of change of states and new states defined by a transition system that has a recursive structure. History is then computable to the extent that it can be represented algorithmically as the successive states of some determinate function. This way of doing relates our approach with the purpose of sociophysics. 
It's a field of science which uses mathematical tools, inspired but not identical to physics, to understand the behavior of human populations. However, there is an important difference between physics and sociophysics. Although uncertainty exists in many respects, most physical processes seem to be based on deterministic mechanisms, and each time we run the model, we obtain the same result. Therefore, the model adopts a form of a scientific or statistical law. Only in cartoons, these statistical laws can be wrong. In the case of social mechanism, each time we execute the model, we may obtain a different final state, even though the model and the initial parameters are more or less the same. This is an introduction to the complex systems that have been also introduced by ESA. Obviously, not any final state is equally possible within such theory. Because of the fundamental deductive nature of any computer algorithm, every generated trajectory of transitional states is, should be consistent with the assumptions and propositions instantiated in the operating rules of defining social mechanism. And this mechanism is very difficult to express using simple statistical law. Let us see an example. This is our own simulation of hunter-gatherer survival in prehistory as a consequence of social decisions on cooperation with neighbors. I've been speaking about this uh, simulation in all the last CAA, so we are not going to the details of how we have implemented, but the results. An interesting behavior of our model is the apparent stochasticity of hunter-gatherer survival. The greater the dependence of mobility and cooperation for survival, the greater the uncertainty of survival predictions. That means that our implementation of the social mechanism of hunting, moving, and cooperating generates many different trajectories, and the probability of survival is not the same in all of them. Also, starting the sources and the initial parameters are the same in all generated trajectories. We are repeating the model, but there is an intrinsic stochasticity. So every time we repeat, we obtain a different trajectory. Maybe comparable, but not exactly. We cannot then answer what really happened, which trajectory really explains observed data. And archaeologists are not comfortable with the large numbers of alternative possible histories. The trouble is that all those trajectories are formally correct, and there is no easy way to decide which one is better. In fact, the very idea of one of these trajectories better than the others is misguided because it's hardly possible to select a single trajectory that best fits existing data. This is not possible because most of the times we cannot measure the residuals of the fitted model or even more. There are so many different statistical tests and ways to handle exceptions that anything can be fitted. Is there any way to exit this labyrinth? We think yes, but the solution is not so easy. We should not focus on a single trajectory or historical scenario, but on the complexity and the modality of the plurality, plurality of worlds that are theoretically possible within the domain defined by the setup parameters. When running many times the same computational model, many different events can be possible, even though they are not within the world we have characterized as the most similar with our actual world. In philosophy and logics, the concept of a possible world is used to spread model claims, whereas facts about what is actual are facts about how events occur, facts about modality are facts about how events could, must, or could not have been, so about what is possible, necessary, or impossible. If we take as an inspiration the many world interpretations of quantum physics, in a computer model of the past, every run is a branch point the target event can be both present and absent, even before we run the problem. The present and absent events and their respective archaeological observability are in different branches of the universe. Both states are equally deducible, but they do not interact with each other. Theorists who use the concept of possible worlds consider the actual world, where archaeological observables come from, to be one of the many possible worlds. For each distinct way the world could have been, there is a distinct possible world, and archaeological observations in the actual world may come from many other possible worlds. Consequently, archaeological observables are not present or absent, and we cannot say whether the explanation, the mechanism that accounts for the presence of a particular event, is true 
or thoughts. To analyze the past implies to distinguish possible propositions, which are those that are true in at least one possible world, from impossible propositions, necessarily true propositions, or contingent, contingent propositions, which are those that are true in some possible worlds and wrong in others. The model analysis of computational implemented theory implies giving a particular truth value in every possible world. In so doing, the meaning of a particular historical event will be expressed in terms of the set of possible trajectories in which it has been generated. Instead of describing the archaeological observables produced by the simulated agents and simulated activity at a particular set up in a simulated trajectory, we should build a semantic model for the meaning of the modalities that fits early stated events. When we discuss what will happen if some set of conditions were the case, the truth of our claims is determined by what is true at the nearest possible world, or the set of nearest possible worlds. Model logic can be extended to incorporate uncertainty by assigning a probability to each possible world. Probability quantifies the degree of belief in an event, and such degrees of belief can be framed in a mathematical structure that allows the probability of an event to be calculated based on the probability of another event logically connected to it. Bayesian networks, that is, graphs that calculate the probability of a consequence given a series of prior hypotheses, can be used to investigate truth conditions and degrees of belief on the occurrence of particular events. Let us come back to our example of hunter gatherer survival where too many different trajectories were generated by the strict repetition on the same setup. In this case, there are too many possible worlds to be individually explored, described, and tested. We have defined the Bayesian network to calculate the probabilities of the different possible worlds and distinguish what is necessarily possible from what is merely contingently possible. This Bayesian network is not a model of agents, but a model of axioms. Agents are described in terms of their attributes, which are implemented as discrete variables. Then, a probabilistic distribution for each one can be represented as a conditional probability table, which lists the probability that the child event takes on each of its different values for each combination of values of events having occurred before in the temporal trajectory. The set of values of a single set is referred to as a case, and possible worlds consist of many cases, and we can represent them in form of data matrix, in which each state is a row and each agent an attribute column. For each possible world, the network propagates probability values using the conditional probability tables already introduced, and hence we can calculate the posterior probability of each event in different possible worlds. Now, we arrive to the end. Is the model analysis of our simulation, in this model, model analysis, we have not privileged one solution over others, but we have examined the, different, the differential possibility of alternative trajectories. Instead of testing individual states of trajectories for they fit with archaeological data, we want to analyze what is possible or impossible given the model axioms and initial parameters. And we have organized possible worlds according to their posterior probabilities. In so doing, we don't know what happened, but God suggests what most probably happened. We're not using archaeological data in the usual way. Archaeological data are used to calibrate starting parameters to decide where is the initial situation you want to explore, to define this initial state, and they can be used to prune the tree of possible worlds. But they cannot be used to select one scenario of others and say, this is the most probable thing, and restrict to this single solution. Basically because the uncertainty and poor resolution of usual data is this a heresy? Are archaeological data no more necessary to explain what happened in the past? We are not just building a time machine to visualize in the present what cannot be seen in the past because it happened before us. We are creating causal models investigating the modality of different trajectories, formally coherent but with different degrees of belief. That means there is not a single view of the past. There are multiple views of the past 
and they can be compared because it's technically possible to other possible, possible worlds according to the degrees of belief. The purpose of computer simulation is not reconstructing the past, but understanding what may have occurred and how what occurred has contributed to the probabilities of our actual world. That means the probabilities of finding in the actual world some archaeological observables from the past which we cannot see. The debate is open. How to use data in a computer simulation? Is it possible to explain historical trajectories from the past to the present without using archaeological data? What's the real explanatory potential of this blim explanation? What's the contribution of formal logics to reduce the number of alternative paths? Can we live or understand the past without generating a lot of alternative past from and alternative histories? How we can make more rational decisions about the causal chain that explains ourselves? Thank you very much.